Welcome to the Innovation and Compliance Podcast, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Join us every week as we talk with industry innovators who are making compliance to help business run more efficiently and at the end of the day, more profitably. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back for another episode. And today I have with me Ben Wolf. Ben has his own consulting firm and Ben also is a recovering lawyer, although not a trial lawyer. So Ben, with that introduction, first of all, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate you having me. Uh, obviously, it's an honor to be on with, uh, with such a preeminent figure and in compliance and legal and such an influential person. So definitely an honor to be here and thanks for having me. So Ben, I tease the audience with your background a little bit, but I was wondering if you could tell us about your journey from your practice of law to how you help entrepreneurs today? Yes, well, it definitely is kind of a twisting and turning journey. So I was in corporate restructuring and bankruptcy at a a firm in New York City for five years. And then after that, I was asked, you know, I did have some healthcare background, which kind of kicks to the company I started working for afterwards, which was a healthcare startup on several hospital Uh, restructurings and bankruptcies on the debtor side. But that's not super connected to what ended up happening next, which is I was asked by a guy who was founding a startup in the healthcare company in the home care space. I was asked by him to join the company and essentially build up most of the operations, including obviously their compliance program. So I was their GC, their general counsel, and built their compliance program, but 90% of what they ended up needing me to do was really just build up the company, build up all aspects of the company, build up the majority of its operational divisions. So I ended up doing that. And one of the the things that the founder of that company discovered was this method of running a company called EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System. And so I was asked, an internal person helping build the company to, to run EOS, which is basically a simple set of tools for running an overall business and really organizing it and staying disciplined and accountable and achieving what you want out of your business. So I built that internally at the company. That's how I got introduced to that framework, the EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System Framework. And that's how I got into entrepreneurship in general, was we built this startup and we became very successful after just three years we were thankfully and gratefully the largest and fastest growing agency of our type in the state of New York. And so very happy, very happy about that and very honored to be part of that. And so after three years, I felt like I would kind of contributed what the biggest things that I was able to contribute and really wanted to help other organizations and get the kind of satisfaction of helping other organizations kind of grow the amazing way that we did at my last company. So I went out on my own, I started, like I said, Wolf Sedge Consulting, or like you said, Wolf Sedge Consulting. And so ended up starting that. I mean, thank God I left on good terms with the old company. They're still one of my clients. But just on this new journey now with helping other companies implement EOS as an outside consultant, coach, educator, trainer. So that's kind of at least briefly how this twisting, uh, turning part of the journey went for me. Then let me pick up on something you just said, because very few people say it, and I'm not sure I've explored it in depth with anyone. And that was you left on good terms. Mm -hmm. Could you give a few words about why it's so important not to burn bridges? Certainly, you gave a great example, but why is it even more important going forward for a business person not to burn a bridge when you leave an organization? Yeah, I mean, maybe to me, it seems somewhat self-evident to the extent there's certain situations that just can't help, you know, where it's kind of nobody's choice. It just is a negative situation with negative feelings, but where that doesn't have to be the case I mean, obviously, it's clearly beneficial, even like in my case, my old company is a client. But even where that's not the case, I mean, it's a recommendation, it's a reference that you could use in the future. If you are living on bad terms and you can't use them as a reference or no one, people talking to them, you may have a good story as to why you're still a great person that someone else would want to have a relationship or a professional relationship with you or hire you. But you may have a good story as to why you left and why it's on bad terms or why you shouldn't contact them. But there's always two sides of the story. The person could still lingering doubts in their mind. What really happened? Was it really all the old company's fault? Were you really wronged? Or or maybe they're not getting the full story. It just kind of leaves a little lingering doubt. So wherever it's possible, if you could stay on good terms and continue referring other people to your old company or 
whatever it is, just stay on a professional and positive basis. I mean, it's a win if, you know, whenever that's possible. So I come out of the energy industry, Ben, and we always say, don't ever piss off your boss because you'll work for him again somewhere else. So (laughs) that's really great advice. And like I said, I've never really heard anyone say that in a podcast. I really wanted to ask you specifically about that. So thanks for that. It's a great message and really important. But now let's turn to this entrepreneurial operating system. And as you know, many of my listeners are compliance practitioners. They're in the corporate world. They have a corporate compliance practice. They perhaps are in another function. could be internal audit. It could be legal. Or they could be in the business side of things. But I was really intrigued with the entrepreneurial operating system. So I was wondering if you might spend some time telling us about that, what the process is, and how you help entrepreneurs use this process literally to grow a business. Sure. And maybe first, even before I answer that, I'll connect it back to what you just said about your audience and what kind of roles they're in. Because one thing that I've come across in both side consultants, even technology consultants, if you're compliance, like, you can't build a compliance program if people are not carrying out the projects that you are saying that need to be done. You need to revamp certain aspects of operations in order to comply with the compliance plan that you're drafting, then you're not compliant. I mean, you can have a great compliance plan and policies and procedures in writing, but if people aren't carrying it out, and if that's really happening in operations, then you could still get in trouble if people start looking into it. Your PNPs look great, but you're not carrying it out. So the ability to like carry out any kind of projects or goals, whether it's compliance related, if it's a new technology system, whatever it happens to be, is critical. And it's critical for compliance professionals as well, just to see that like, hey, our business has their act together enough just to do things it sets its mind to. It sounds basic, but a lot of organizations, they don't have clear boundaries of who's doing what. And there's a lot of crossover or three different people being involved in the same thing you know, or everyone doing things differently within the same role and everybody's doing it a little differently. And that just creates so many problems when you start getting to larger organizations in being able to deliver consistent products, services, whatever, or staying compliant, just getting things done. So it's just critical for any business, any type of business to just be able to have a good structure for how to set goals, and then create discipline and accountability for getting those done. To the extent people want to refer their CEOs, their leadership team to an EOS implementer like myself or whoever, certainly it's a way of helping get things done so that you could get your compliance priorities actually taken care of. But super briefly, what is EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System? It's a framework for running all aspects of a business. Very simple set of tools. It was first articulated in the book Traction by a gentleman named Gino Wickman from Detroit. And he clarified these ideas based on many years of experience working in EO. I don't know if people have heard of EO Entrepreneurs Organization. And is one of the founding members of the EO Detroit chapter. Used his work with a lot of entrepreneurs over there over the course of several years to refine the principles here that have now been tried and true and tested in thousands of companies all around the world. What it is, is it lays out basically the idea that you're dealing with 130 issues all the time in any kind of business. And those really come from weaknesses in one of the six major areas or key components of a business, which is vision, people, data, process, issue solving and traction, how you create actual traction towards achieving your goals with this accountability. So EOS just is kind of a method, you know, and a set of processes to how you strengthen all those six key components of your business. And it helps companies achieve three things, which we call vision, traction, healthy. Vision is basically getting everybody in the organization on the same page, where they want to go, where they want to head, who they are, what they stand for, and how they want to get to those goals. Like what's the plan? And then traction is where the rubber hits the road, like the word traction implies, that essentially means how do you get people executing on that vision and that plan with discipline and accountability? So it gives you a method for making sure that your goals actually happen. And three is healthy, which is having a professional, functional, cohesive, and functional leadership team. Because unfortunately, that is oftentimes and sometimes not the case. So, you know, those are just in a very, very high level what EOS achieves. And 
I think you asked how I, or same as other EOS implementers, which there are several hundred around the world, help their clients and you know succeed and get everything they want from their business. And essentially works that you know you have a call with an EOS implementer, it seems like it might be a fit. I or any other implementer would have a what's called a 90-minute meeting with the entire leadership team to lay out in more detail what the EOS model is and what are the main tools and disciplines that we would take the company through to achieve all of their goals and everything that they want to do to make their business more scalable, more fun, more enjoyable, more satisfying, and more profitable. And if it still seems like a fit after that, then I actually work with leadership teams through a series of one-day sessions off-site, away from me, cell phone away, except on breaks, and you know, kind of working with the leadership team together in one-day sessions. There's three sessions the first quarter, and once a quarter after that, and a two-day annual planning session. So super briefly, that's kind of what EOS looks like and where I think it might even fit into the compliance professionals out there because they really want to see things get done that they know need to be done. So that's really the thing that struck me, Ben, when I did some research to prepare for this podcast and then now listening mm-hmm. to you talk about the EOS process, that it is a flexible process. It can be used in a wide variety of business settings, obviously for the entrepreneur, but For the corporate compliance department, this seems to me to be a great way to think through a major initiative. Would that be a fair assessment? It would depend. I mean, you know, one of the credos of EOS is that a business can only have one operating system. So if a company is having its processes and procedures and, you know, of the entire company that's defined by Vern Harnish's scaling up or some other system that was custom developed for the organization, then it would be hard to have EOS run separately or independently within one department. That might be difficult, I would actually say. But that being said, it certainly could be implemented throughout almost any kind of organization, although typically it's organizations of any industry between 10 and 250 people, just typically speaking. But it's definitely a great tool. And there are some companies that might run EOS independently in one business unit. You may have a large company that has, you know, 10 subsidiaries or 10 or 10 business units, you know, and maybe it runs EOS in one of them. And either that's just independently or maybe it's as a test run to apply it to the other business units, but it can run business units independently. Unfortunately, my corporate experience would tell me that different business units, different geographic area, different product service lines all tend to run siloed independent processes. So I mean, think for, that's the case. Yeah. Well, Ben, now let me turn to your podcast. Uh, because sure. that, I was able, uh, really honored to be on your podcast, but you have a podcast entitled Win Win, an Entrepreneurial Community. I'd like Absolutely. to ask you, why you started the podcast and really what's been your experience as a podcaster sitting on the other side from where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. I really started it, I guess, for two main reasons. One is connected to a reason that we spoke about in the episode that we recorded on my show. And that is really as a way of really opening the door to learn from and do interesting people that have valuable knowledge and information to share. And as you said, when we spoke before that it's a lot easier to say to somebody like, Hey, do you mind talking with me to get some advice? I mean, that's one thing, but to to be able to say like, Hey, can you be on my podcast? And I get half an hour to ask questions and share valuable knowledge with not only myself, but with other people out there as well then it's a win-win. It's giving them more exposure. It's giving me the chance to learn from them. And it's giving everybody else out there who's listening the chance to learn from them as well. So I think that's, it's called win-win entrepreneurial community for that reason. I think as the other thing is really just to, just speaking from a business perspective, is to get my own name out there and to expose more people to me and what I do and the way that I like to add value to clients through their exposure to the show that I'm putting out there. Uh, So I guess that's the other main reason I do it. Well, Ben, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time, but I was wondering if our listeners wanted uh, to find out any more information on uh, yourself or Wolfside Consulting, how could they do so? Well, yeah, so absolutely. People can go to my website, which hopefully will be updated with some more information about, you know, more accurately reflecting the, the nature of my business. It's called wolfsedgeconsulting.com. You can also just email me at bwolf. Again, my name is Ben Wolf, so it's B-W-O-L-F at wolfsedgeconsulting.com. And if they want information on EOS in general, they could also go to eosworldwide.com, eosworldwide.com for more information on that as well. 
And yeah, that's the main thing. So my contact info is on the website, wolfsedgeconsulting.com. You can get in touch with me that way. Happy to talk with anybody about their business or certainly either if I can help them as an AUS implementer as well or refer them to somebody more local. Because again, there's ones all around the world. I'll be happy to learn more about them and, and find the right referral for them too. Definitely happy to do that. Well, man, this has been a fascinating exploration of a process that I think I hope compliance practitioners will at least consider and, and more than consider simply uh, adopt as part of a moving a compliance function forward. So thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me, and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it as well. Thank you so much for having me on. If you're a compliance professional looking for a convenient and effective way to fulfill your continuing education requirements, go to fcpacompliancereport.com slash courses and choose from four hour-long training packages that will keep you current. That's fcpacompliancereport.com slash courses.